I'm Wes Hall, and I am the newest dragon in Dragon's Den. I'm the executive chairman and founder of Kingsdale Advisors. I'm 51 years old. I started Kingsdale when I was 34. If you have a problem with investors in this country and they want to replace you as a CEO, you call me. If you have a problem with someone trying to take over your company and you don't want to sell it to them, you call me. I have the top firm in the country at helping companies stay independent or to become bigger. I'm also the founder of Black North Initiative and I started Black North because I want to change the way black people are perceived in Canada. When I go into a boardroom, there's generally no one that looks like me in the boardroom. I want to change that and Black North is here to do exactly that. You have never had a dragon like me before and you'll never have another one again because there's only one West Hall. I am special because how many people in this country have made it from a tin shack to the top of corporate Canada? Pick them. There's none. So there's only one and you've got them. I want to be an example to kids that are from underserved communities, which I was from. So I want those kids to go, I want to be like West Hall one day and I want to be a dragon. So I was born in this uh, town in Jamaica called Golden Grove. It's actually literally in a tin shack. It's on five foot stilts because it would get flooding all the time in that neighborhood. I have 13 brothers and sisters and my grandmother raised us all. I came to Canada at 16 to live with my dad. I lived with my dad for two years and then at my senior year of high school I go, I want to be on my own now. And I left to start to build my life. I graduated high school then I started to do odd jobs. One of my first jobs was catching chickens. And uh, another job was cleaning offices. I was a security guard in a very tough neighborhood. And I had to respond to burglar alarms in those tough neighborhoods with a flashlight. That is a terrible job. So if you want to know what not to do in life and how to be serious, get one of those jobs. You're going to wake up really fast. I sent myself to university in the evenings and then uh, end up on the mail room, uh, in the mail room at, on Bay Street. And then that just kind of kept going and going and going till I'm where I'm at today. I am an entrepreneur because of my drive, passion and commitment. But I also watch the best entrepreneur that I know, uh, which was my grandmother. She worked like multiple jobs. She looked after all of us and she just didn't rely on somebody else to take care of her grandkids. She was industrious and she was hardworking. So I learned that. And as a result of that, I figured that anything is possible for me because of what I saw her accomplish. I think I'm gonna be the kind of dragon that people relate to and uh, that people get along with, but also they're gonna recognize the fact that uh, I can be a tough dragon as well. I think all the dragons will love me. Everybody loves me. There's this thin line between arrogance and confidence, and sometimes people think I cross that line, but I don't think I do. I don't want an entrepreneur that dances on the line. I don't dance on the line, but I want them to have confidence. I want them to have bravado. I want them to know that if I set numbers with you, you're gonna hit the numbers out of the park. I want to hear you say, you want 20, I'm gonna give you 30, because that's the bravado that I bring to what I do. I'm sector agnostic when it comes to investing. I just look at great people uh, with great ideas, with great passion that I can work with and mold to become better. They have to be prepared to work harder than me in order to steward my capital. And if that person is not prepared to do that, or if in my view, that person is not gonna be the person to do that, I don't care how good your business is, I have no interest in investing. When I was growing up in St. Thomas, Jamaica, I never thought I would actually leave that neighborhood, period, full stop. I got on an airplane for the first time. I saw an airplane up close and personal when I was 16 years old. I didn't know what snow was. I didn't know what highways were. I didn't even see a traffic light, you know, until I came to Canada. So to me, this life was literally, was so foreign to me that I didn't even imagine it. I didn't even dream it. I thought that I was gonna grow up in that same neighborhood and I was gonna die in that neighborhood because that's what exactly happened to every single person who lived in that community. Yeah, I love nice things. Listen, if you live in a tin shack, man, with no running water, no electricity, and you have the opportunity to actually have running water 
and to have electricity, would you take it or would you deprive yourself of it? Yeah, I, I'm going to take it. So when I see those nice cars, you know, on television, and then I realized that I actually can buy one of those, I, I decided to. And, I, and it's a lot of fun. I think what drives me to continue to push myself is because I've accomplished the impossible. So in my mind, there's no such thing as impossibility. And uh, so I will continue to push myself as far as I possibly can push myself until somebody tapped me in the shoulder and say, young man from St. Thomas, Golden Grove, Jamaica, you've gone far enough. The end of the road is here. And, uh, but there's no end in sight for me.